On this episode of Pure Brews America, I'm getting medieval on your butts at Dragon Meat Brewery. Then it's off to Brown Iron Brew House, where craft beer and smokehouse cuisine come together. And finally, we head to Chicago to sample the heroic creations of Revolution Brewing. I'm Shannon Long, founder of Brew Export, and I want to welcome you to Pure Brews America. Join me as I travel across Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois on a journey to discover the amazing stories, people, and places that make up the craft beer industry's greatest breweries. Hey, it's Shannon Long, and today we're slaying beers at Dragon Mead Brewery in Warren, Michigan. every other week. I've been coming here for over 10 years. I've come here almost every week. So it feels like you're kind of walking into like a D&D type of like dungeon -y. There's like swords and stuff on the walls. It's big enough that you can hang out with a group but small enough to feel kind of intimate. Everybody is like a family here. In the spring of 1998, Larry Channel, Bill Robel, and Earl Sherbarth combined two of their passions, Dungeons and Dragons, and home brewing to open Dragon Mead Brewery. We were, what, number 30 in, in the state in, in the licensing, and there's now, what, 300? 20 years ago, we couldn't get distributors to talk to us. You know, they, 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 we'd go in and present the product, and they'd say, nah, nah, nah. I don't too expensive. Know, too expensive, too many. Our main income was the pub for 10 years. First day we opened, we had a line that almost wrapped around the building, then once we started getting more popular and, and people started realizing that, hey, the craft beer, there's something to it. They started picking us up and then the volume just kept ramping up. On that three barrel system, we were actually brewing 2,500 barrels a year. And we ran with that for many years, just adding three barrel tanks, adding some nine barrel tanks, adding two 15 barrel tanks. And then we reached a point where we just needed to have, you know, a larger brew house. So in 2013, we upgraded to the Kraftwerk 20 barrel brew house and we've been running with that for our production beers. In the summer of 2016, tragedy struck the Dragon Mead team when co-founder Larry Channel passed away at the age of only 62. I met Larry in my first job assignment at Chrysler. When we were home brewing, we would do it in Earl's garage. When things were going great, we'd be laughing and joking, and, but then as things got more serious and we started having problems you know, in brewing, we'd get really quiet, so my mother-in-law, Earl's wife, would call out from the house, is everything okay? You know, I don't hear you guys laughing. So we would stand there and go, ha, 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 ha. And that was a salute that, that Larry's wake. Yeah. Everybody raised a glass and gave it the, the big ha, ha, ha. So not a dry eye in the house. All right, ladies, let's drink some beer. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. What do you have? What do we want to start with? Okay, we'll start with Castle Bright then. Yes, it's good all year round because it's so light and refreshing, but summertime, it, it kills it. We had to put this one in bottles because it was so popular. You definitely get the apricot on the nose. Yeah. This is so good. Isn't it tasty? This is such a happy beer. <laughs> Castle Bright's a type of apricot, and that's what we use oh. in it. So it kind of goes with our Dungeons and Dragons theme too. That's Perfect. There's a perfect yeah. apricot out there for you guys. Why don't we go uh, with the Eric the Red next? Eric the Red. It's an Irish red, um, and it's a five percent. There's nothing too heavy about it at all. You can have a couple no, of these, yeah, and especially a five. Nice percent. alternative to our more potent beers. We yeah. import the ingredients from Ireland to make it. It's very true to style. Welcome to the U.S. beer. Yes, all of our ingredients are imported from country of origin. I'm Irish, so I'm, I'm, oh, I'm enjoying yeah, everything yeah, about perfect. this beer. Yeah. <laughs> What's up next? So we'll go to Final Absolution next. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Final Absolution. This is like the beer. This is the beer. The beer. In their homebrew days, Bill, Larry, and Earl were creating Final, and they wanted to make a triple that was very similar to Affligum. That was their favorite Belgian triple. So they spent a lot of time perfecting that recipe. We actually won a gold medal for the best Belgian triple in the world, and that was Final Absolution. Who would have thought that a Belgian triple at 10% would be 
flagship. I do like it because it's one of the strong beers that actually tastes good, but I try not to like have too many in one sitting. Oh, everybody knows this beer. Even at festivals and tastings, they'll come up and say, I want the dragon meat, and I know they mean final absolution. This is the dragon meat. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, cheers. I mean, I can't thank you guys enough for letting me say, drink some beers with you. And Thank you and for coming yeah. out. Yeah, this is so much fun. All right, Eric, so you're the head brewer here at Dragon Mead. Guilty as charged. <laughs> so I ended up in Dragon Mead when they opened in May of 98 and actually started producing beer on the three barrel system. Did you ever think you were going to be here 20 years later? No, I think it's um, rare to plant your feet in one place for that long. I just really enjoy working here and I enjoy, enjoy the ownership and the leeway that we get with creativity. So I hear you have a little bit of an activity for me. Yeah. You sign me up, what exactly are we going to be doing? So we are going to fill a couple of bourbon barrels from Valentine Distillery in Ferndale with our under the kilt we have a scotch ale. Last year, I tried my hand at filling barrels. Let's just say it wasn't pretty. So I wanted a chance to redeem myself. So step one is we're gonna open the valve coming out of the vessel. All right, squeeze and turn so it's- Towards you. Parallel. Yeah. There we go. All right. Step two, we're gonna take the filling device and put it into the barrel. So then you're gonna wanna open this, but not all the way. Maybe go at like 45 degree angle. We're going this way? Towards you. Oh, towards you. All right. season two. Yeah. Have you had any like major mishaps? Have you had one that was geysering for a while before? Or? I have done exactly what you did. Don't feel embarrassed about it. <laughs> okay. Good? Yeah, we'll get a, just a little beer coming out. All right, good. Shut it. <gasps> Other way. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, for two. That's fine. That's easy to clean up. Thanks for working with me. No problem. No problem. I'll fill the second one. Okay. <laughs> He's like, you're out of here. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me out to Dragon Me today. Cheers to 20 years. <laughs> Visit purebrewsamerica.com for more about our Emmy-winning show, including broadcast schedules and past episodes. Jerky presents versus. As you can see by our irrefutable science, Jack Links has more protein and better music than these other snacks. Jack Links Jerky beats the snack out of other snacks. Introducing Jack Links Extra Tender Steak Strips. In January of 2015, the husband and wife team of Tim and Patty Eisenbraun opened Brown Iron Brew House, an old world German style beer hall and smokehouse with their partner and chef, Denny Smiljanowski. I love being here. I love working with Tim. I love being with my husband. It's just been great actually working together, but not too close. Tim is the brown iron brewer and purchases the beer, while Patty handles pretty much everything else. I went for the super trifecta of craziness. Not only did I want to start a business, we decided that we were going to build this facility. It was, it was so many things that were, went on at the time. It was the coldest winter ever, it was right before we broke construction. It was the wettest spring we ever had. 
I mean, there were delays on delays. Tim and I thought, it's just a, going to be a mom and pop thing. We hope people come. The first week we had over 6,000 guests. It was overwhelming for us. And the excitement that came from the community was something that wasn't really expected right off the bat. People just grasped onto the whole craft beer scene instantly. We've been coming here since before they, like the pre-opening. We were here for that and then we came, we were here once a week for a year. We didn't miss a week for a whole year. Brown Iron has returned the love back to the community by hosting countless fundraisers and special events, including beer versus wine dinners and tap showcases with some of the best breweries. The staff is awesome. I mean, we love the people here. Obviously, all of us are all Cicerone certified here at Brown Iron. With that being said, they trust our opinion on everything. We have 66 beers on tap. They change daily, and it's always great to see new faces and old faces. So we want people to come in, especially those people who have never had beer before, or perhaps they like the big branded beers, and we want to give them a an opportunity to try something new and discover beer here. Anytime a keg does blow, something new takes its place. So our tap list is always changing, it's always something new. So whether you're here one time a week or one time a month, it'll be different. Michigan is full of amazing craft breweries and this is the place on the east side of the state that you can come and taste everything. The staff at craftbeer.com agrees because they've named Brown Iron Michigan's best craft beer bar for 2016 and soon they might start winning awards for their very own craft beer. So Brown Iron just started brewing our own beers. I know it was um, long awaited, but we are super excited to launch and we've found that our crowd has been really receptive. I come here once, maybe twice a week, and lately since they've started making their home brew, enjoying that as well. The system size is not large. It's only three and a half barrels. So we have the ability to just get kooky with it, and that's our goal. Right now, we're only on to batch five right now, so we're, we're still rolling through some batches. Even though we'd like to make something crazy too, we have a Kolsch going here that people just like something easy to drink. They don't want a eight, 10% beer at this point. The beer's good, the food's really good. We are a brew pub, and a brew pub is classified as a place that makes beer, but also has a full service restaurant. To me, I think you, you need the two to complement each other, the food and the beer. Oh, brown iron's food, where do I start? Our chef specializes in barbecue food, and I think our burgers are really on point. Besides the incredible burgers and barbecue, Brown Iron's menu includes over 50 gluten-free items. We control everything that goes into our product. We don't just open up a bag of something and drop it into a fryer or open up a package and cook it. We have phenomenal food here that we make from scratch every day. So whether you're looking for great food, craft beer, just a friendly hangout, you should pay a visit to Brown Iron Brew House. Now it's time to make this amazing Fago craft cocktail. Start with a glass of ice, then add 1.5 ounces of citrus infused Tito's vodka. Next, you'll add three ounces of Fago's original red pop. And then three ounces of your favorite raspberry ale. Top it off with ice and a quick stir and some fresh lemon. It doesn't get more delicious than this Fago Red Pop Raspberry Ale Shandy. Pure Brews America is sponsored by Fago, the original craft pop that's been made in Michigan for 110 years. Pick up a two liter or six pack today to create the perfect craft cocktail. When we started 20 years ago, the beer business was tough. So we played it safe and brewed the beers we thought people were expecting, which led us pretty much right to the edge of bankruptcy. So we figured we may as well start brewing beers that we liked. Bigger, bolder, aromatic. 
in your face beers. And luckily, it turned out a few other folks enjoyed those beers as well. So now, if it's brewed by us, it's really brewed for us. That's the secret. But you just told everybody. Oh. <laughs> At Meyer, we believe in the people who believe in themselves and bringing our customers the very best local craft beers from all over Michigan, like Founders, Bells, and Shorts. Because things that come from nearby don't just taste better and fresher. They help keep our prices low and our communities thriving. I'm Mike Stevens. And I'm Dave Ingers. Look for us and great beers from all over Michigan at your local Meyer. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Did you know there are over 100 different beer styles? This variety creates so many opportunities for awesome pairings with jerky from our friends over at Jack Links. With so many options, where should you start? How about Jack Links Jalapeno Carne Seca Beef Jerky? The tender dried beef jerky has a fiery kick that pairs perfectly with an India Pale Ale, like Revolution's Anti-Hero IPA. You could also substitute with a Founders Centennial IPA, Arbor Brewing Sacred Cow, or Norm's Raggedy Ass from Griffin Claw. So visit your local Meyer store today and stock up on Jack Links and your favorite craft beer. This perfect pairing will help feed your wild side. For over 20 years, Meyer has committed to craft. Today, they've stocked their shelves with hundreds of your favorite craft beers to create the Beer Frontier. The Beer Frontier is your in-store and online home for discovering and exploring the best breweries and beers. Have you been wondering what flavor popcorn, pasta, or potato chip pairs best with your favorite craft beer? Find pairing information to further fuel your passion for craft with the Beer Frontier. I think like craft beer is 30% of the beer sold in Meyer, which is amazing. That's more than any other chain store in our area that I know about. So they really are a leader in that sense. They've brought craft beer to the forefront. Uh, the, the support of different stores is huge for, for small breweries especially. I mean, because you know that's where you're really displaying your particular products and people are coming in and sometimes being introduced to them for the first time. So having the ability to showcase your product in a particular store is huge for, uh, for every brewery. Meyer was our first expansion into uh, large stores, you know, large uh, chain stores. It's it's always a thrill to see to see your products, something that you've worked very hard on, and to go into a store and see it there. It's been a wonderful relationship and, uh, throughout the years, and we look forward to oh another twenty. Join us in exploring the Meyer shelves and celebrating over twenty years of commitment to craft by checking out the Meyer Beer Frontier. Yeah, well, I lived in Chicago for 10 years, so that was homecoming for me in some sense. We're in the Lincoln Park neighborhood. We have 130 beers on tap, about 200 bottles. A really, really heavy Chicago brewery influence on the draft list. A very extensive beer program there, more than most of our other locations. Fortunately, Chicago had a huge boom of breweries open after the Goose Island thing happened. So all these brewers left and went and did their own thing, and it's been great for the, for the scene. You know, Mark did some great stuff with the design. It feels like it's been there since 1970. So we modeled the look to kind of mimic the movie Jackie Brown, so it's got a real 70s vibe. The carpet that we have in the lounge area is taken from the movie The Shining. It's, it's got this, yeah, it's loungy. When you go to Chicago, you got to bring your A-game in Chicago. Now it's time for the latest scoop from Hopcat. Join the Cat Pack. Hopcat's new loyalty program gives you a chance to earn free food, swag, and even a trip to Belgium. Get a free order of crack fries and a meal on your birthday just for signing up. Upgrade to the Hepcat for $99 and get a free order of crack fries every time you visit. Find out more information at hopcat.com. When Pure Brews America returns, I visit Revolution Brewing, the largest independent craft brewery in Illinois. Velasic Pickles is a proud partner of Pure Brews America and the craft beer industry. Don't forget to pick up a jar of Velasic Pickles to enjoy with your next craft beverage or Bloody Mary. At Planters, we're all about great taste, and we thoroughly test all our nuts for superior craveability. Hey, Richard, check out this fresh roasted flavor. Looks delicious, huh? Yeah. Richard, try to control yourself. I can't help it. And how about that aroma? Love that aroma. 
Craveability approved. Ooh, can I have some now? Sure. Help yourself. Wait, what? Irresistibly planters. We don't frost brew our beer, and hot chicks won't appear if you drink it. Our beer doesn't come in a bow tie shaped can or need color indicators to tell you it's cold. It won't be delivered by Clydesdale horses, and to tell you the truth, we aren't the most interesting people in the world. Fact of the matter is, we don't tell stories. We just let our beer do the talking. Back in the early 2000s, Janice would have dropped off all four of her kids at soccer practice after a sit-down dinner. But Janice is a mother today, so all four of Janice's kids are on four separate paths of self-discovery, which occur at four different times in the afternoon, leaving a total of four minutes for her kids to eat. Even though dinner time has become less strict, we remain strict as ever when it comes to our standards. Made with premium cuts of 100% kosher beef, so you can feel good feeding your family no matter what time dinner is. Hebrew National, we remain strict. Today, we're here in Chicago, Illinois, checking out Revolution Brewing. Best beers in Chicago by far. Everything they do is good. There's nothing I don't like. They really don't do any wrong with any of their Hero Series or anything else they do here. You come here and you're a beer connoisseur, you've got a lot of choices. We pretty much drank through the whole menu and everything's really good. It's awesome, it's fantastic. Definitely lived up to expectations. Well, I have had Revolution, uh, I've had their beer many times over the years in the Chicagoland area. This is my first time to the Tap House and I am super impressed with it. Not only with the beers that they have, but the production facility itself. It is wonderful, and I love Revolution. I will be coming back many times. Today, Revolution is the largest independent brewery in Illinois, but the road to success was not an easy one for founder Josh D. I always wanted to open my own brewery, and so it was a long struggle. But even the plans to open the brewery didn't work out at the beginning. I quit my job at Goose Island to open Revolution, and it failed. Chicago wasn't quite ready at that time for more local craft breweries. The market wasn't ready. Distributors weren't ready. They didn't want to start carrying new breweries. That was the revolution that we were thinking about. So when the brewery project didn't quite work out, I opened a bar. And that was a nice way to get into the industry and sell other people's beer, learn about you know, what sells, what people like. So the brewing project was always in the back of my head. We ended up opening the brew pub in Logan Square on Milwaukee Avenue in 2010. We make 100 different beers throughout the year at our brew pub, and people kept asking us, you know, we like your beer, can you, you know, make that so I can sell it at my bar? And we're, oh yeah, sure, let's just fill some kegs in the back. And then it, we did that for a little while, and we started working on the plans to build a big brewery. And so we're sitting today at the, the Kedzie Brewery, opened up about five years ago in order to do, get into wholesale beer, to make beer, to sell off-site. And we were selling everything we could make, we started out smaller, we've expanded this location already. You have not one, but two brew houses. That is yes. like every brewery's dream. Tell me about it. they're huge too. Here at Tedzi, our production brewery, we have two brew houses. We have a 45 barrel system and a 120 barrel system, which we push the limits on. We fill the 120 up to 150 barrels. It gives us the ability to do, we usually do about six turns a day on, on the big brew house, which allows us to fill one 800 barrel fermenter over the course of a 24 hour period. All right, Carissa, time to drink some beers. All right, Shannon, sounds good. We're gonna go ahead and start with our Rev Pils. This is our German style Pilsner. So this is a great beer for anybody who says they don't like craft beer. This is a nice intro beer. This is about as close as you're gonna get to a macro. Absolutely, but way better. Way better than. Way better, way more flavor. And a macro beer, and the mouthfeel on this is just gorgeous. It's, yeah. It makes me happy. Pilsner's great, love it. Great, just like easy drinking beer when you don't want to get like, you know, too hammered or whatever. And it's a Chicago Pilsner. It is a Chicago Pilsner. So what makes it a Chicago Pilsner? It's a little different from uh, how the Germans would do it because we do use those German hops and dry hop it. Because us Americans, we like those aromatics. So that is what makes it a Chicago Pilsner. And the water. The water from Lake Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> the best water in the country. Woo -woo. <laughs> I love it. Right, Galaxy Hero. This is probably one of our most well-known IPAs. 
The first time we made Galaxy Hero was to be you know, the official beer of C2E2, the big Comic-Con here in Chicago, and it's really one of the big Comic-Cons across the country. So Galaxy Hero actually has a costume. There's a person who cosplays Galaxy Hero, so it's a really fun beer. We created a comic book, a, a Galaxy Hero comic book. We've now had two editions that we've done. And it's just like a fun thing to kind of bring these heroes to life. Galaxy hops are really fun because they are actually Australian hops, which means that they have more passion and tropical fruit notes. So as opposed to the citrus and piney notes that you're gonna get from American hops, these are a little bit lighter again. It's really good. I mean, I like Galaxy hops, so it was a nice variant of that beer. It was really, really good. So the last one, saving kind of the anchor for last. Annie Hero IPA is certainly our, our lead beer. That was the first IPA we've ever brewed at our brew pub. So we sat down and we're like, you know, we want to make something that's approachable, has really nice malt flavor and backbone, but then is, you know, just has layers and layers of American hop flavor and, and aroma. So then we started making more of these Hero beers with different hops. It gives us an opportunity to bring in all the different hops that are being grown in the Pacific Northwest. Crystal, Chinook, Cascade, those are all present in here and you're gonna get a lot of citrus notes off from that, so. Any IPA drinker is gonna love this beer. That time and time and time again. Every time, and it's easy drinking enough where you can have more than one. We want all our beers to be sessionable. Thanks right. for drinking beer with me. Thank you. Joe, I hear you're gonna put me to work today. I am, I am. We're gonna build some variety packs. Not just any variety pack. Not just any variety pack, the League of Heroes variety Ooh. pack. We've got four beers in our League of Heroes variety pack. Of course, we have Anti-Hero, our flagship. Uh, we have Mosaic Hero, and we have Galaxy Hero. And last, we have, for the first time ever, Amarillo Hero. Very cool, so take me through this process. It's pretty lever intensive. Uh, yes, variety packs are a big challenge. So we have to can each one of these beers separately, store them, and then the process we're gonna see is where we combine all these cans into the 12 packs. Oh my gosh. So we need four people, one at each one of the stations. Everyone gets a pallet of beer and everyone just pushes the cans they can into the conveyor system. And then they go into the cartoner, all single file, go into a 12 pack and pop out the other side. Easiest way to do it is just pop out the front, pop out the back and shove them through. And then you gotta make sure they all go into the lane. Okay. Because they'll jam up. I feel like I'm just birthing these cans. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm holding up, holding it up. Uh-oh. We're getting, getting backed up. You gotta stop talking. <laughs> I hope they're okay. So right now we're pretty much doing this for a full day every other week. <laughs> This is way better than the traditional way to do it, which is all by hand. Yeah, that's incredible. All right, now we're back in action. Josh, thanks so much for having me to Revolution today. I had an excellent time. Cheers! Cheers!